When we consider the types of things that will have a sizable impact on our health and longevity, there's a no doubt VO2 max belongs in that conversation, maybe even near the top. You may have heard any number of doctors, PhDs, and MDs espousing VO2 as this holy grail of metrics to know how healthy you are and how long you will live. Well, I'd like to show you the best way to improve your VO2 max according to a bunch of studies. First off, what is VO2 max? In short, it's the maximum amount of oxygen that your body can use during intense physical activity. And why does that matter? It matters because for your body to utilize oxygen efficiently, so many systems have to be working maximally. We're talking about your diaphragm needing to allow your lungs to expand, your lungs themselves to have to allow oxygen from the air into the blood. Your red blood cells have to be abundant to deal with the mass influx of oxygen that you're sucking down your lungs. Your heart has to be pumping forcefully and fast to move the red blood cells from the lungs to your muscles as fast as possible. Then your muscles have to take up the oxygen and have effective mitochondria to generate cellular energy to propel you through through intense exercise. That uh, cellular energy requires oxygen to be efficient. So, like I said, multiple systems, with some excluded, have to be working extremely efficiently to maximize your performance, and your performance won't reach its peak if you aren't healthy or if one of those systems is deficient. So, this one measure, VO2 max, is an excellent proxy for health and performance. Now, many studies have looked at VO2 to find out what is the best way to improve it. In one analysis of over 50 studies, the researchers compared all the studies using moderate intensity cardiovascular exercise against high intensity exercise. So think long duration running or jogging against a near sprint or sprinting level of exercise. We can see that data here I'm not going to bog you down by explaining everything here, but different modalities of high intensity training, abbreviated as HIIT or HIT here, are compared against moderate intensity exercise we just mentioned. See the 0.0, .0 line there? It indicates no preference one way or another for VO2 max improvement. However, if the boxes and lines move to the right, it indicates HIT improves VO2 max more than moderate intensity exercise. That still doesn't explain everything going on here, but in general, the takeaways here is that several HIT methods were superior to moderate intensity exercise, although not all HIT methods were better. Okay, so which ones then? For that, we can open up this study where the researchers separated people into four groups to perform four different intensity exercises across a range of intensities. One group was assigned to do slow, long distance exercise, like the moderate intensity that we just described earlier. The second group was told to exercise at a more vigorous intensity for a shorter amount of time. And the other two groups did variations of high intensity training. If we look at the relative effect on VO2 max, we have the slow, moderate intensity on the far left, the more vigorous but not high intensity exercise next to it, called LT, and then the two high intensity training styles on the right. We'll get into the specifics later. For now, we can focus on the white bars because they indicate an increase in VO2 max across exercise modalities from a baseline. Now these data confirm the previous analysis. High intensity exercise is best for improving VO2 max. So what are these protocols exactly? Well, before we get into the specifics of the exercise protocols used here, if you're interested, I cover different features that maximize the benefits of these protocols, as well as have a more complete step-by-step -step protocol from another study and a step-by-step -step progression template on how to improve week to week, all of which are included for the Physionic Insiders. Assuming that you want more options and more hand-holding on designing your routine than the ones that I'll be going over now. If you do, it's linked in the uh, description. Okay, let's cover the two protocols used in this study. One is called 15 by 15 interval training. Essentially, you perform 15 seconds of sprinting at 90 to 95% of your maximum heart rate with 15 seconds of active rest, which means that you jog at around 70% of your maximum heart rate. You repeat this 47 times per session. 
The second protocol is called a four by four interval training. It entails four minutes of sprinting at 90 to 95% maximum heart rate with three minutes of active rest. Again, jogging at 70% of maximum heart rate. This was repeated four times per session. Both of these workouts were done three times per week. And if you're wondering how to find your maximum heart rate, well, one easy, although imperfect way is to use this simple formula, 220 minus your age. The takeaway here is that the best way to improve VO2 is through high intensity training. And either of these protocols will work to improve VO2 and supply immense health benefits. If you want more related content, check out this video right here. I'll catch you over there, unless you outrun me, of course. Bye.